let's close out of this report. It is saved as you can see and we'll create a first cost report. Again, I right click on the category and select new report template and I'm going to call this uh, cost plan report and this is going to be the structure of the cost plan. To start, I click edit and again this is going to be an empty report and I will repeat the, the step of creating the, the, the report layout once more. So I insert the bands that we want to use, report header, uh, we want a page header, we also want a page footer, and we want a detailed report which right now is going to be components. I'll change the font to 22 and uh, the color is again going to be Vico Blue 0, 80, 160 and I draw a label in here and this report is going to be called uh, cost plan report okay old italic and I want to include a picture of the box in this one as well, of course. I click on the carrot, select the image, the Vico logo, and I choose zoom image to fit it into that placeholder. Okay, we'll skip the page header in this report and go into the detail information right away. Actually, the page header is going to be uh, the table header that we want to see repeated on each page. Uh, so what we want to see in this report is code, description, quantity, unit, uh, the unit cost and the price. So that's six cells. Uh, so what I will do is um, draw a table in here and make sure that I got six cells. Uh, I need to insert a few more. Sure. Right. And then one more. And I'm going to call those code, description. We have the quantity, the unit, unit cost, and the price. And probably we want to make this a little bit smaller. Snap it to here. Maybe even more. Quantity a little bit smaller. Unit cost bigger. Like this. And then set this to the page margin. Okay. I want to format that in such a way that it's got a, a background color. And I want to make that bold. And this will now appear on each page, each top of the page, so I know what kind of data I'm looking at. I'm going to reuse that table by using Control C, Control V, so just copy and paste that thing into the components bin. As you can see it aligns automatically. I will remove the formatting of the header, so I'll remove the background color and I will make that the normal formatting and I will move this up as well to make sure that there's no space between the lines. Uh, the cells will automatically grow if the description is long, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but I don't want to add space in between because that causes a problem. When I want to save it to an Excel file, it will create an additional row, which is what we don't want. Now let's link up these items. Before I do that, I forgot to go back into the PowerPoint. Um, is uh, an important thing uh, with the uh, the cost structure, and you will recognize the uh, the, the cost plan report. There's a concept called node levels. Uh, so this is a, a fragment of the data set that we're using, and with node levels, uh, I mean the the count from the root of the project. So the project itself is node level zero, the first level, so substructure is A. And then it goes down to node level six, which in this case are the uh, the resources. 
setting up your data set like that makes reporting uh, a lot easier because you always have a dedicated function for dedicated node levels. Um, we use that those node levels for conditional formatting. So you can associate a type of formatting, so font size, uh, font type, uh, using formatting rules. We'll do that for the Cosmon report as well. And what I will use in this report as well is a calculated field. So besides the standard fields that we have for the components category, you can add any number of calculated fields uh, which use any of the uh, existing uh, prepared fields. So in this report, we'll use uh, a unit price calculation, which is the active price divided by quantity. This is the report template that we're working on. Okay, back to the report designer now. So nothing is linked yet, and we only have names. So I'm going back uh, to the field list, and now I'm going to choose uh, from this list uh, the fields that I want to use. It's going to be code in this first cell. It is linked. Then description, drag it over. And then the quantity, the unit for the component or assembly. Then we want to use the active price. So the active price of the component or assembly is going to be used. So when it's a component, uh, it is the component's price. If it is an assembly, it is the sum of everything within that assembly. Unit cost, for that we're going to use that calculated value. To calculate a value, you right click on a category and say add calculated field and then adds a new empty item in here. To define what that is, you edit the expression and of course it is empty right now but in the fields item right here I see all the uh, fields that I have in my predefined list. So what we want to do is divide the active price by the quantity. I just double click on that item to insert it in the formula. And that is it. So now for each component or assembly, it calculates the active price divided by quantity. And that calculated field is what we want to use for the unit cost. Of course, we want to format the quantities as well, the quantities as well as the, uh, the active price. So I'm clicking the caret over here and select the format string number and I want to use again the N2 okay and for active price I'm doing the same format string number and then I choose actually let's choose a N1 or whole number and click OK and then in addition to that I want to align those values right okay um, then I want to include a page number as well, with page info, and I want to center that on the page. Okay, let's save that and hit print preview to see what we did. So this is the current report. Unit cost we forgot to format, and as you can see as well, that everything is a flat list. There's no distinction between any of the node levels, so you cannot really see uh, what substructure, what would level up the uh, cost or assembly component structure that is. We want to go back, first of all, fix the unit cost, make that the right format, and then apply conditional formatting. The unit cost is going to be using the format string, the number apply that and uh, we want to align that right as well. Now let's define the formatting rules. So we click on the caret and the formatting rules can be accessed from here. Right now it is empty and so I want to define new rules in the rule sheet. And as I said we want to make those formatting rules based on the node level. It is important that you first select the components in here because it is the components that we want to look at for the condition. And for each level, we want to use 
the node level property. And in this case, the node level is 1. That's where we want to start. So node level is 1. And for node level is 1, I want to change the font. It should be 14. And the style should be bold. Okay. Let's do the next one. Again, make sure that the data member is components. I can just type in here as well. So node level two equal symbols is two. And the font is going to be uh, 12 point and just a regular. And the third rule, note level is going to be three. Make sure that the data member is selected and the font is going to be uh, 11 and in italics. Okay. Fourth rule condition is note level equals four. The font is going to be uh, ten point and it's going to be bold. Level number five. Uh, will remain as it is, but I do define the uh, condition, so node level is 5. And then the last one, node level equals 6. Uh, we want to use, that is, this is the resources, we want to use uh, a smaller font, which is 8. Um, I can change the font from here as well. So what I really want to use is Arial. Just by typing. And the last one. over here. Now if I copy templates, which is what I will do for the next one, these rules can be reused. So once you've set them up, you can reuse them quite easily. You can preview what it looks like over here in the bottom. Okay, those have been defined. They have not been applied yet. I want to apply them to each cell in this report then. So I'm just clicking the double arrow, click OK, and that includes those rules. So when I hit the print preview button again, it will format my report my report based on the uh, rules that I've set up. It doesn't do that. Let's see. Probably I need to apply them to the individual cells. So let's do that quickly. Formatting rules to apply them all. Okay. So you see I selected the first cell and it already formats them correctly. Now I need to repeat that with the other ones. Formatting rules apply. Quickly go through them. And the last one. Now you can, I only formatted the, uh, the font. In addition to that, you can also change the background color. So if you would like to format that as well, you can assign a dedicated color to each layer of the report. So you can see how you can quickly generate that structure uh, that uh, is based on, um, on the levels and the layers of your Cosmo report. Let me quickly uh, go to a prepared version of this same report. Is what you want to do is uh, 
play with the, uh, the width of the columns as well. And that way uh, you can make sure that the, um, the numbers fit. Uh, so this is a, a fully prepared number. But also applied uh, indenting conditionally uh, to uh, the, uh, the last three layers. So to layers uh, four, five, and six, they have padding assigned to them based on the uh, node level in the cost assembly structure. This is our current report. Anytime you have uh, created a report, uh, you can save that report uh, as in, this, in the file format you want to. Uh, so PDF or Word document or an Excel file are all available. I now know, notice that the zero level is still included, which I may or may not want. If you want to remove that, uh, you go into uh, the filtering. So use that again use the filter string and I can say node level uh, needs to be larger is greater than zero. Project level is zero and by applying this filter I will no longer see the project level content in my report. So now it starts at A substructure. <coughs> 